Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Salam wa Rasulullah, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Welcome to our uh, Friday live interview with Pamela Tawney. And Pamela is also one of the certified Back to the Fitra mentor and coaches and uh, lives in Melbourne, Australia, not far from me, just a little plane flight away. Yeah. Um, but I won't be flying there anytime soon since you guys just had another outbreak. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stay in my little safe spot too. So, what? Yeah, I'm in a hot spot. It's yes, I know you're in a hot spot. Right. Where, where I do all my work in Melbourne is right in the middle of the hot spot. So I'm <laughs> going to stay quite comfortably here in Adelaide in my protective little bubble. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, alhamdulillah. Welcome, Pamela. Great to have you here. It's good to be here. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. <laughs> so, um, just so you know, Pamela can't see any comments and nor can I at the moment because we're in Zoom. So, I'm just going to bring up um, our live here on Facebook in my phone just so that I can see any comments that you have so I can share them with her. Um, here we are. Oh, look. So hopefully the comments, sometimes the comments don't come up. So do send us lots of love and lots of comments and everything, and we'll do our best to, to address them. So Pamela, we, <laughs> we are going to talk about a juicy topic today, aren't we? Yeah, well, it's juicy for me, yes. <laughs> well, I think it's juicy too. <laughs> so we're going to talk about dark and the light. <laughs> do you yeah. want to explain to everybody what we mean by the dark and the light since that's the the terminology you came up yeah with well i mean there's so much in our life you know that's about polarities you know what i mean in order for us to understand the dark we need to understand the light or vice versa you know there's things thrown around in many different beliefs you know like yin, yin, yin and yang you know the good and evil you know we have to have an understanding of one to either appreciate or understand the other Hmm. Well, actually, you know what? So just the, the, the middle ground, um, someone was describing when you go into a pool of water that is exactly the, that middle temperature or whatever it is, it's like you can't feel the water. Like, That's yeah. That's body temperature, you mean? Yeah, as in temperature. So that was just bringing up the hot and cold analogy, like the opposites that you that we need that to actually experience things, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so the dark and the light. Yeah. What is the dark? So for lack of sort of better a description, we can maybe say, because this is a society we live in, you know, that the darkness is generally the negative and the, the light is generally the positive. So, and, um, you know, we're sort of in these scales. I mean, you know, we're Muslim, so we understand this concept of scales, you know, quite, quite well, you know, but that the good and evil, you know. Um, and for me, um, I would have to say that the the, the scales were the a, a tip towards the darkness for mm. me. I mean that's that was you know where I was coming from with my depression, or most people are coming from with their depression. That we get so caught up in this darkness and bleakness, and we can't see um, we can't see beyond that. We can't see any light. So for me, that the, the scales were tipped towards the darkness. Mm. And so Yep. So that darkness, just so that everyone understands what you're talking about, isn't necessarily something that would be seen on your face, right, though? it's You're talking about something that's right inside you. Yeah, well, if we're, if we're talking about, you know, maybe yeah, something that I believed about myself for a very long time is that, yes, there's this, that I was actually made up of this darkness, that it was so much a part of me that, and I'll probably talk about it a little more, a bit more later, but I thought I, I actually thought that I was defective. You know, there's something wrong with me. I'm, I was broken. And this is, this is the language that so many people who, 
who do have an understanding of this darkness or have felt this darkness. That's the language that we use, that there's something wrong. We're broken. And, and this is often sometimes, you know, some of the information or feedback that we're getting from other people as well because they don't understand it. They don't get it. Um, you know, you're, you're, there's something wrong with you. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Cheer up, smile. What's wrong with you? Snap out of it. Yeah, snap out of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, one, the one that I got was stop being a victim. It's like yes. <laughs> oh yes. Stop being a victim. Mm. Well that one cuts deep, doesn't it? Yeah. Cuz it's like, well, I don't mean to be a victim. Yes. <laughs> and that's the thing. A victim. Telling me to stop being one doesn't really help much. Yeah. Other than make you feel worse. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like you, you want, you're talking to people and you're wanting people just to, you know, sh show me a little bit of hope, you know what I mean? Show me a little bit of, a little way out of this, you know? Um, but yeah, you get that feedback and you're just like, you know, well, what's the point? What's the point? And of course, yeah, we can get so dark that, I mean, this is where, you know, the suicide ideation might come in, into it as well. And, and that's, that's a part of my journey as well. Um, that it got that dark for me, you know. I might, I might as well just give up and just not participate mm. anymore. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the other end. And when when I'm actually talking about the light and I'm talking about positive, I'm actually not talking about positive as in good positive. I'm talking about a false positive. Uh, you know, this is the it's the almost like a suit that we zip up. We, we want to hide that darkness. So we'll zip up this suit of positivity. You know what I mean? I've got this beautiful, nice, shiny veneer out in the world. Go, look how positive I am. The world is lovely. The sun is shining, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just managing, I'm just imagining um, Julie Andrews singing the sound of music <laughs> when you were doing that. <laughs> yeah. No. But, but that, I mean, that, that's, that's a lie, that, that's, that's rubbish, you know. So what I'm actually talking about is we can, we want to deny, or each side, no matter what you're on, didn't, which, uh, whichever end of the scale you're on, sort of can't see and deny, or, or wants to deny the other side. It doesn't exist. Mm. It doesn't exist. But it's actually... A coexistence. Mm. You know, we have to understand the dark in order to understand the light. Like I said before, we have to understand the light in order to understand the dark. But yeah, this false positivity, you know. And um, I have to say, my family were very good at this. Well, as Australians, we're often very good at this. You know what I mean? This false positivity. You know. Uh, it seems to what we ha have or have um, taken on as a culture. We she'll want be right, mate. Hide the dark. You know? Yeah, she'll be right, mate. She'll be right, mate. That's it. Yeah, and it's, no worries. It's a whole bunch of BS. <laughs> like it really is not true. You scratch under the surface. I mean, you know, we've got. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a. <laughs> we've got a long history of you know perhaps even alcohol abuse. You know what I mean? So it ain't right because we wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> yeah if she was right. Yeah, that's right. Um, so and anyway. So anyway. Sorry. Yep. You, who's she anyway? <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah, who's she? <laughs> it's, yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, within my family, and this is where um, I guess as a child, I, I, I also, you know, developed this, this thinking or this belief or, you know, this story about myself that I didn't fit in is because I did have an understanding of the darkness quite early and I'm in a family that wants to completely deny that darkness. Like it doesn't exist. We don't want to go there because it's scary. We don't want to go there, you know. So I would often bring out emotions in them that, I don't want to deal with so we just we'll just shut that off and we might dismiss that mm. um so so yeah <laughs> that's that's where it was I always had an understanding I was always able to tap in and understand the darkness mm. um but I was labeled as you know different bit weird 
bit of a freak, you know what I mean, by, you know, my, my caregivers and also other people around me. And I think that it's actually quite normal for every human being to go through patches of darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, because even when we look at the story of the Prophet mm-hmm. there were times when, you know, things were pretty dark for him too. Yeah. And this whole denying its existence, then everything will be okay, is really not helpful. I mean, I, re- I remember at 17, I, re- I, I would have never taken my life, but I wrote this poem which was basically describing what the world would write in the newspapers when they found out that I'd committed suicide because I was this happy A student that had everything going for her. So why would she be miserable? Yeah, exactly. And that was the that was the facade that you're talking about, that my, my way, which I came to understand, um, that was when I was working in, in parenting by connection, you know, as you and I have that connection. Um, I came to understand that my, my pursuing excellence in everything was my escape. It was my cover. It was my mask so that no one could see what was really underneath all of that. It's a good one, isn't it? It is. It is. And it's, well, I mean, the effects on my body now are not so great, you yeah. know, being a few decades later that, that wear and tear of always having to live up to that level of excellence. Um, but it's not a genuine excellence. So it's not Ihsan. I wouldn't call it Ihsan because Ihsan yeah. is from a very genuine place and it comes without sacrificing yourself because Allah doesn't want us to harm ourselves, right, in, in our acts of worship to him it wasn't that sort of excellence it was I have to be excellent so that nobody knows what's going on so there was no blessing in it and a lot of harm in it because it it came at um not making sensible decisions yes yeah yeah this this pattern or this Mm. this darkness is running underneath Mm. and yeah I got good at that too Mm. I got good at that too and and this is the common misconception as well like I I, it is depression like you know the darkness is depression you know or depressive state depressive thinking it's never going to get good enough there's no hope um so that was running underneath for me but from the outside people saw me as you know I was I would get I would move through the ranks of success in in my career quite quickly Mm. You know what I mean? I look. I appeared like I had it all together. I, you know, it was. You know, but underneath, I'm just like, oh my god! One day, if they just scratch the surface, they're going to find out that I'm a fraud. I don't belong here. Yeah. And I, just, and, I mean, and this is what my talk's going to be about when we when in the conference is I'm not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's so much work goes into protecting people from scratching that surface, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. But they don't find out what's really going on. But yeah, I was the same with my career. I went from being a junior programmer starting on 23,000 a year to being head of the sales and marketing um, and country manager in Singapore in five years mm. on, you know, over 100,000 a year. But that was many decades ago. So that was a lot of money back then. But I did that in less than five years. Yeah. And so that's what I was like, you know, people thought I was this massive go-getter because I was also, um, this is all prior to uh, becoming a Muslim, I was also into cave diving. So I was always into all the really dangerous things and proving myself. And um, I used to think it was great that they, they, my nickname was Amazon Woman because I was always carting my own tanks around and everything. <laughs> so it was always this show to have to be so good right so excellent at everything and then and when you were met with the reality of what was really happening (laughs) underneath Mm, well what happened was uh, it, it 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 led to ending up being for instance in an abusive marriage which was the beginning of a big spiral down to the point where I emotionally completely shut down. Physically, my body was about to shut down and my doctor was really worried I was going to die. 
um, and, you know, and spiritually was just hanging on to a thread. So it, it doesn't work. You can't sustain it. It, yeah. it leads you to making decisions um, that just aren't good. Um, and it, and it, it can also be a part of why I probably stayed too long and, and didn't leave earlier is about I can't let anyone know that I failed at marriage or that I failed at this. So you, you hang on to things that aren't okay too long because yeah. you've got to keep this facade going. Yeah. Isn't it funny? All of these stories or beliefs that we have, you know, that I mm. can't fail, you know, I have to, because everything you explained is what you would, it's a descriptive of, you know, a high achiever. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah, so I'd be a high achiever at work, but at home there was like a horrible mess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I don't know about you, but for me, um, it was a brilliant feeling when when I had my big insight around the inside out paradigm. And I always remember the month, May 2016, I stopped being a victim. And that outfit that you were talking about, I kind of unzipped it and stepped out of it where I didn't even have to do that. It fell off. <laughs> it yeah. It's like I didn't even have to unzip it. It fell off. And it, it really was an amazing sensation of just being able to be me. And... And that was the rawness of it, isn't it? Even though I might not feel that great today, I'm able, I'm, it's, this is me. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah, and, and I embrace even the weaknesses in myself because actually now I can make better decisions because if I know it's my weakness, then it's not a great decision to go down that path, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I love the, my weaknesses and my strengths, not just, you know, I don't, I'm quite happy to tell everyone what my weaknesses are. You know, I'll tell you my, um, what am I call it? Uh, strength tests, things, assessment that I did. It was very, very enlightening. Yeah. <laughs> Consistency was the last one on the list. That's one of my biggest weaknesses. Those of you who've worked with me would probably tend to agree. <laughs> <laughs> on the top scale of my strengths is having lots of great ideas. Yes, and that's why I can't be consistent because I'm always following the next shiny flying object. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, you know, it's taken so long to get our Back to the Future Academy to this point is because I kept chasing shiny objects instead of being consistent. Yeah. But yeah, there we go. See, I don't mind sharing my weaknesses now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to be in that in that comfort yeah. of whatever yeah. whatever's there is there. That's it. And this is yeah. the balance, you know. It's if we can just come to a neutral point of okay, yes, I can see the darkness is over there been there you know I can see it I can see the the joy of life the light over here too which is authentic the authentic joy of life mm. um it, we can just you know live from this neutral point I mean sometimes we might tip a little bit over this way and then you go okay I get I got it you know and with with the inside out paradigm you know it's yeah. about you know it's the thinking in the moment that's tipping the scales you know so we can have as much as we can have this darkness thinking we can also have this this light thinking and you know which is pretty awesome <laughs> but most most of it is just living in sort of this this neutral point yeah of, but i think that the beautiful thing is is knowing knowing ourselves and knowing when we've we've tipped the scale one way or the yeah. other but the but when we've can still also flip into the false light. So I had a, a patch recently, actually it was on E day where I had one of my little flip into the dark patches modes and I got caught up in my own thinking and it was like, I knew what it was. and <laughs> was a bit stuck there for a few hours, but you know, alhamdulillah, it passes, it doesn't stay. And we don't panic about it because we know that as soon as our thinking has moved away from whatever it is we're stuck on, we're going to experience things differently. But I also know myself when I've 
got some insecure thinking going on because that mask temporarily comes on again. Yeah. And I say daft things and I have this really nervous giggle. And it's like, oh, here we go. I, I've gone into this kind of into that mask again or into that kind of somehow I've got to, um, pre, you know, protect people from seeing things. I think it's when when I've got something big or having something important and I'm not in the right space for it like because these days I know when I'm not in the good space for something but it's something that I can't postpone so I have to show up anyway yeah and it's interesting how that old defense mechanism pops back in place to try and protect me and it just makes things worse it's like no it's not how it's that's not the right way just yeah be vulnerable just be yourself <laughs> but yeah again um it's interesting I had one of those experiences recently I can't put my finger on it but I just remember afterwards going just feeling that kind of feeling in my stomach like I was that again mm. yeah. but then I didn't dwell on it and didn't beat myself up over it I just thought you know that's how it works sometimes we can't see it sometimes we fall back into those things but let's not panic about it because as soon as we've moved on that's it it won't we'll be back to ourselves again that's right so do you want to share a little bit about your experience with finding some balance or finding that that place where you're not hiding from the darkness or pretending or Oh, well, it's, it's, it's still a sort of a work in progress, really, you mm -hmm. know, if I'm completely honest. I mean, you know, I was with, with, with you in the circle on Tuesday of the other, um, you know, ladies in the, in the Back, to, Back to the Future Academy. And, yeah, I was there. I was back in that dark place. I wasn't seeing my way out of it, mm -hmm. you know. I was, you know, it, and it was... It was, yeah, the, probably the deepest I've been in a long time in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But alhamdulillah, just through the the space and the knowing that you ladies were there, because this is the thing, you know, when we're in there, then we, then we make up other stories. You know, people are judging us and, you know, this is crazy and this, you know, I can't, you know, like if, oh, we tie ourselves in, in knots basically. I mean, because I'm not there today. I can just go, oh, you know, it's just so tiring. Yes. Um, but, you know, when, when you're in it, yeah, you don't, you don't see your way out of it. But, but being in and being held just by you ladies on Tuesday, it was actually able to just lift spontaneously all by itself. Yeah. Without me having to do a thing. And, and that's, that's, now that's new for me. Because my old pattern, and, and I'll share this with you now, and, and also my old training, is that we're gonna we're gonna get in there, we're gonna get all our tools out, we're gonna, you know, roll up our sleeves, we're gonna put in our rubber gloves and we're gonna get in there and we're gonna ship this thing. <laughs> so I came up with an analogy the other day. It's like it's it's the same as tackling a a, a, a dirty burnt uh, pan. You know what I mean? Yeah. So many modalities, you know, they want the rubber gloves on, you know, you've got all your tools, you've got all your harsh chemicals, and we're going to get in there, we're going to scrub, and we're going to lift this stuff, you know, until you're out of it, right? And so, and so many therapies are like that. And I, I've done them, I've, I've also facilitated them with people. But for me, it was just like, but it's not shifting, it's still not shifting, it's still there, <laughs> still there. So the flip side of that and what i and what my understanding of even the inside out paradigm is is that all we're really arming ourselves with let's say for to stay with the analogy of the dirty pan maybe some bicarb soda and water which might be just which is the metaphorical love and compassion for ourselves right mm -hmm. and we just let that soak we do nothing we just let that soak and what, what generally happens? It starts to lift mm -hmm. all by itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Without you having to do a thing, without you having to have that, you know, that get in there and do the hard work. Mm 
you know? <laughs> Can you come and do my dishes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have I have plenty of my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, and you know, it was interesting last Tuesday was when we heard your voice at the beginning of the session, you sounded mm -hmm. completely defeated. Oh, and yeah. the whole session, just so everyone knows, Pamela hid behind her camera. She didn't come on camera so we could see her the whole session. But she did speak again at the end of the session because I always make everyone share what they took away from the session. And you could hear the shift in her voice. We couldn't see her to see the difference <laughs> because you can often see the difference in someone's face, like the face just lights up. But the voice lit up. We could hear the change in her voice. There was just this... I'm okay under that voice instead of that. It, it was a layer that was stuck for a very long time. Like I, I was brought in and open, and that was opened up many years ago. And then I spent so many years after that trying to get it and just clear it. Is what I'm what I was talking about. Is like I just need to get in there and clear it. But what I really needed to do was just allow it to be there because it was going to lift by itself. You know, Allah is going to take this when it's ready to be gone, you know, when I'm ready, you know. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And we didn't, we didn't do it. We didn't put our rubber gloves on and yeah. start scrubbing you, by that's the way. <laughs> and, and, and that's, I mean, in, in each situation where I've come to you like that, it's mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just there. And you, you, even though I'm not able to give myself the, the bicarb and water, the love and compassion, you are there. The other sisters in, you know, the Back to the Futurist uh, uh, Academy are there. And that, that's that's generally all we do, <laughs> you know. We just reminded you, reminded you. What, what, what was going on for you. and Absolutely. And we, then, we might occasionally, you know, stick our finger in the, in the, uh, the uh, bicarb soda and give a little bit of a point or, a, you know, that's a story, you know, or well, that's, that's something that you're telling yourself, you know. Mm. caught up in but but most of the time we're just yeah sitting there waiting for it to lift <laughs> that's right and so just letting you know we've got Yasmin, Romy, Ines, Amy, Rahma, Rokhaya and Nariman all watching us um, right now so welcome everyone Romy says she loves the way you speak it's very interesting mashallah <laughs> And uh, uh, wa alaikum as Rahma. So Rahma's in London. Gosh, it must be a terrible time of the night for you to be up. <laughs> Rokhaya says, SubhanAllah, always, Allah always guides me to what I need to hear exactly when I need to hear it. May Allah reward you all. Alhamdulillah. And mm -hmm. Amy says, Alhamdulillah. I think she was saying Alhamdulillah. Um, that, that came through when she, you were sharing the shift that you had during our session this week. Yeah, well, and it was, and then it was just kept happening after throughout that day, and that was when that analogy of the <laughs> cooking pot came to me, and I went, like, "That's mm. what it is." Ah, mm. because oh. I mean, in, in so many modalities, we're talking about you know the layers of the onion and unpeeling the layers of the onion, but then what they do is that it's like you know we should let that just happen spontaneously, but then they just go rip. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what? No, this is not what needs to happen. And and this is and this is where, uh, oh, what is it? The uh, you know, Allah doesn't give us more than we can bear. I'm probably misquoting that, but but that's what it is. It's 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 that alone is telling you that it needs to happen automatically of its own accord. You know what I mean? It needs to happen. Just, you can't just rip it apart. It's got to just, this layer's got to come off because that's the, that's the only layer you're ready for. Mm. Then another layer, then another layer, then another but layer. But my, my experience was that it all just fell away in one go. Yes, well, yes, because you that's what you're ready for. But, but for a person like me, if I see that, I'm just like, well, I want that. Mm. I want it just to fall away and be done with. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. that's the high-achieving self- <laughs> Again, yeah, well, you see, that's the, that's the, like, okay, we, we've got to sort this out. But then I was like that too. And yeah. my go-to was to make dua to Allah and all the time Allah guided me to the next step. And one of the other things I think to share with 
everyone is that having it all go away in one go can have its other setbacks as well in that because everything shifted for me very rapidly, the people in my life weren't ready for the new version of me because yes. <laughs> they were used to the old version. And most people were happy with the new version, but those people in your life who have their own insecurities where they feel like everything has to be a particular way in order for them to be okay, that rattles their cage a bit when suddenly you show up as a different, show up in a different way you're not a different person but you show up in a different way and they don't know how to deal with that so it can it can muddle some relationships for a period of time not forever um unless it's a relationship that should be muddled forever <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah. for those to either understand what's happened for you and want that too or just i'll just keep playing this game because this is where i'm safe you know, I don't like that you've changed. Mm, yeah. So, um, and then time unravels that whichever way it's meant to go. But the key thing that I like to remind everyone is that um, Allah knows how much everyone can bear, not just us, but even the people in our lives. So sometimes our journey may be slower, not because we can't handle it, but because there's people in our life aren't ready for it either. And so we have to be very accepting of the process, accepting that yeah. Allah will enlighten us with what we need to know about ourselves, about everything that we need to be our best selves, according to his plan, not necessarily according to our impatient plan <laughs> of being okay yeah. straight away. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So we've got some, um, so welcome, Nashida's joined us as well. And um, Rahma says, how do you maintain being in a positive state? Ah, well, you see, that's another misconception, isn't it, Pamela? Yeah. <laughs> do, you wanna, do you wanna tackle that question? Well, yeah, well, is it authentic, this positive state? Mm, well, that's, that's, yeah. that's probably my only question to that is that, you know, or, or are, you know, are you doing it for somebody else even? Mm. I mean, or is someone telling you that you have to, you know, be a little more positive? Because I mean, that's just, ugh, I would get that all the time. You're just so negative all the time. But this is this is where I am. This is the authentic nature of where I am. So I had a really interesting discussion with my daughter this morning in the car, and um, so she's been listening to me a lot. She she was actually saying in the car, if anyone asked me what. A quote of from your mum what would you say and she said uh, she was saying I'd tell them feelings come from thought in the moment <laughs> oh, <good luck>. that <laughs> is beautiful <laughs> and she said you know the the more I have conversations with my friends the more I realize I'm like you or me she said she said and she was going do you know what bothers me is when I'm sitting there and I'm quietly having some sad thoughts and people come and tell me I have to go and see the counselor because I'm depressed. She says, I'm not yeah. depressed. I'm just having some sad thoughts. I'm just having a sad moment. Why can't I just have a sad moment? Why does everyone expect us to always be happy? Right. And I think this is the big misconception. We are living in a world that's marketing the fact that you're not okay unless you're happy all the time. That is BS, why would we have a whole range of emotions to experience if we're meant to be happy all the time? How are we ever going to even appreciate happiness if we never feel sad or we never feel angry? You know, we, uh, happiness would become ho-hum, right? That's it. You know, just like you were saying at the beginning, we need the polarities. And it's not about, and what we're teaching isn't about removing all the, all the things we've labeled as negative emotions. It's about understanding that feelings are feelings. They come from thought in the moment. As the thinking changes, the feelings pass and change too. So if you're having happy thoughts, you're having happy feelings. In the minute, next minute, you might be having sad thoughts and you have sad feelings. You know, just the other day, I was going to the fridge. I was in a completely neutral state emotionally. And then I saw a bit of um, some chicken that someone hadn't eaten, which normally I would have pulled out of the fridge, taken off the bone and put in the cat bowl. But there's no cat bowl anymore because about three weeks ago, the cat died. 
And right now when I'm telling you, I'm having some sad thoughts and some sad feelings about my cat. And at that moment, I had some sad feelings about my cat because there's no cat to give the leftovers anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. So your feelings follow your thoughts. So you're allowed to be sad sometimes and angry, frustrated. Um, we probably don't want to get to depression because I think what we come to understand is that sadness doesn't need to lead to depression. We get to a point where sadness becomes a peaceful type of sadness rather than a, a depressing sort of sadness. So this whole idea of positive state, we don't maintain a positive state. In fact, you set yourself up for failure if that's what you expect. Yeah. You, set, you set yourself up to think there's something wrong with you if, they, if you think that that's the normal. That's not how human beings work. The Prophet Wasallam wasn't always in a positive state. Yes. Yeah. You know, he had many sad moments. We have many hadiths about it. He had a year of sadness when his, his dear beloved wife, Khadija, and his uncle um, both died in the same year. And they were also in exile from Mecca. There was even there's a verse in the Quran where um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is telling the Prophet وسلم, that he didn't forsake him because the Prophet وسلم, didn't have a revelation for something like six months and he started to think there was something wrong with him. So this, this whole idea of positive state, that's, the pro, that's a problem in, in the first place. And it's probably why people end up in the state that you described at the beginning, Pamela, about being in such a dark place, but pretending to be positive because the world expects us to be positive. Yes, it's a trap. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to share a little bit about um, oh, my mum. So my mum is was is was caught in that you know positivity trap. You know what I mean? This. Mm -hmm. this jovial Aussie sort of nature that we have you know what I mean where we joke and you know we poke fun at each other and blah 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 and we're you know so that's that's the sort of the family that I was coming from and me understanding more than that it was when I mean my mum's had many medical conditions sort of through her life but then she got the big one you know and she got she got hit with the big one the big C you know what I mean and mm -hmm. I was you know, living in Melbourne. So I'm, you know, 500 kilometres away from my family. So through that time that I've been living, it was sort of there was a separation of my, of the responsibilities that I had, I think, with the family. And then my sister called me and she's like, I don't know what to do. My, sorry, my, I would have to say, my mum went through chemo, like the chemo radiation beautifully, like a star, like a champ, you know what I mean? You know, she... Yeah. Yeah, she lost the hair and everything, but didn't really get sick, you know, not sick enough to, to, you know, not still participate in things until she got to her last treatment. And this was when the phone call happened. My sister calls me. She's like, I don't know what to do. Mum's given up. Mum wants to die. She just wants to give up. Now this, even for me, for my mum, like, whoa, like that is, whoa. <laughs> that is so not how I know her mm. you know, she's always been able to find the positive in things you know and I'm like okay right well you know in part of me is going well you've called the right person <laughs> you know if she's you know willing to give up she doesn't want any medication hey I, if, I, I know what that feels like you know what I mean like the dark you know I know where she is and so it was interesting because initially I'm just like you know what I don't want to I don't want to deal with that because I didn't want to deal with the judgment from my family of how I wanted to do things, you know, and, you know, talk to her. But then this is my mum. This is my mum. How could I not be there for my mum? So I, quick as I can, I, you know, went back and sat with her. I mean, she was in hospital and, you know, she, yeah, what she said, she's not taking medication, not doing anything. And I just, and I sat with her and I said, you know, so what's going on? And if I slip into a few profanity words, I'm sorry because I'm. I might. I want to stay authentic to the situation, but I'm going to try and catch myself. <laughs> I do come out, you know. Um, so and she was there, in, and I, I pretty much picked it straight away where the, the, where she was at, and she just went, you know what? I don't want to play this effing game anymore. This why is everybody telling me I have to be effing positive all the time? You know what I mean? It's 
crap. Well, she didn't use that word, but she just went, you know what? This is crap. And all I just sat there and went, yeah, it is. It is crap, you know? Because, you know, I, I, I'm not uncomfortable being in that space. Whereas my fam my, the rest of my family is so uncomfortable. Can't be there. No, she, yep, yeah, she'll be right. You'll be right. It'll be fine. Just look at tomorrow. The sun is shining. It, you, you'll be fine. I'm like, no, it's, yeah, it's crap. Yeah, it is. And then, and, and just for the f few minutes after that, you know, I'm just, you know, looking into her eyes and I just let her cry, sob, 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 you know, that how crap this is. And just like our children do when we're doing, you know, the peaceful parenting stuff right. that we do, she shifted through. And all of a sudden she's like, oh, I probably should take my medication now. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah. That was probably the first insight of where I went, hey, I get this, you know, and, and there's this polarity thing, you know, I, I kind of get this. And we need to have an understanding of both. Yeah. You know? And this maintaining positivity is exhausting. And she was at the end of very rigorous treatment. She just didn't have the energy to maintain the positivity anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, Sapana, like giving her permission to not have to be positive was all she needed. She needed someone to let her off the hook. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Mm. That was you know, a powerful moment. I mean, the, the relationship that I had with my mum, she was, you know, she's always felt that she's been able to let down her guard with me anyway. Mm. But that was the rawest I've actually ever seen her. And mm. I'm so glad that I got to experience that. Because it gave me permission as well to to be okay with the fact that it's, it, we, we can be sad or we can be so defeated sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Amy's joined us, Amy Rose, Ali, and Jana, and Walaikum Salam, Jana. Um, Rahma is saying that you feel the pressure and saying, I was feeling like that during my Ida then eventually exploded after my divorce. And you see, this is the thing. What happens is it reaches explosion point. And when it hits explosion point, it's kind of like, you know, the one of those horrible um, landmines that sends shrapnel in all directions. It's like one of those going off, isn't it? It yeah. hits everybody around you it harms all the relationships around you when that explosion happens and so this whole concept of maintaining positivity it's it's a load of rubbish we want to throw that idea out the window right here right now anyone who's listening and understand that it's so much better to have our feelings and move through our feelings as they happen as raw as they can be sometimes and not kind of try and hide them because it's, it just takes too much energy to pretend to be something that you're not feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, so two things either happen, you kind of either shut down, which is what was happening for me, or you explode. Either way, the people around you suffer and the ones that suffer the most are our children. Yes. And that's where it's really not fair because it's not their fault. They're, they have the right to be protected, to be loved. And if we have either shut down or exploded, we're not able to do that for them in the way that they deserve. And so there's a really, really big necessity for us all to take responsibility for our emotional health. Mm -hmm. not to expect that there's a knight in shining armor that's going to come along and fix it because it doesn't yeah, the disney right. princess syndrome yeah oh absolutely. yeah shoot all no, those no, movies. Disney princess i like to think myself as rapunzel that will just have you know is uh, um armed with the um the, the new rapunzel that's armed with the frying pan and just goes whack right <laughs> <my princess laughs> <and she's> gone, whack <laughs> i 
Okay, now, peaceful parenting does not require fry pans and going <laughs> No, 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 no. I just thought I, we would clarify that for the audience, <laughs> Miss Pamela. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true, but I'm just, I'm just saying that, the, the, yeah, the Disney princess syndrome. Yes. You're waiting yes. for, yeah, your, your prince to come, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cut the hair off and climb down yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and in fact, you're not even locked in a tower. It's imaginary anyway. Yeah, there's no no fry pans in peaceful parenting. It might be pool noodles, but no fry pans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I was caught in that too, and and so much so that um, I mean, I was able to teach my kids enough to go. It's not you, and the, and that was actually being fed back to me by one of my kids at one time. She goes, "It's not us, is it? You're 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 upset." Or you're angry, you know. You're throwing stuff around a little bit, but it's but uh, it's not us, is it, Mum? And there's a part of me that went, you know, Alhamdulillah, she's not taking this on herself. And then I went, oh, but there was also this guilty part of me that still thinking that she's that she might be taking on that she's responsible to make me okay. Mm, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I I saw that in my well. my eldest daughter um, when I had the little dark patch that I'd mentioned before at Eid. I saw her trying to fix it, and I went, "Oh, God, I can't let her believe that that's her responsibility." Yes. You know, it was. And firstly, I, I was too stuck myself in that moment to say the right thing to to let her off the hook. But I was like, "I don't want to be fixed. Go away." <laughs> it's how I felt. <laughs> But um, afterwards, I reflected on it. Went, mm, you know, she's already taken that on. Um, that it's her responsibility to fix people, and and yeah. yeah, we need to be very mindful of that because it doesn't work this way. It doesn't work this way at all. No. Yeah, Daniela's back joining us. Um, Daniela was in the room with me before, but she's disappeared off home. She's joined us again. She said, that's a true blessing when you know our children understand the paradigm. Yeah. And the thing is, we've got to understand it first. And then it becomes natural to pass it on to our children. I haven't really sat down to teach my, my daughter about the inside out paradigm. But then I had that conversation with her in the car this morning, which shows that she gets it. Because um, And the reason it came up, interestingly, is because one of her classmates for a research project is doing um, his project on uh, positive thinking or something ah. like that, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I was just clarifying with her and said, well, it's not about positive thinking, is it? <laughs> And that's where our conversation started. But you see, there's a, there's this whole thing out there about positive thinking. Oh, I, I wasn't even doing that right. No, you can't get you know, that. Like this high achieving, you know, got to do it right, got to do it perfect sort of. Yeah, we well, you see, you're not good enough. That's why. Positive thinking right. Like, yeah. You're not good enough. That's the problem, isn't it, Patrick? You're not good enough. enough. Yeah. Yeah, 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 get better. Come on, lift your game. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you know that's the yeah the unfortunate thing about movements like that yeah yeah so when it comes to the inside out paradigm which you've heard us mention a few times we don't dissect thinking into positive or negative good or bad um we don't even dissect feelings into good and bad we have uncomfortable feelings and we have more comfortable feelings that's probably as much of a definition as i would give them but they're all just feelings. And even the uncomfortable feelings can get to a stage where they're not even uncomfortable. As I said, you can have a peaceful sadness. When we went through the process of the cat um, dying, um, obviously it's not the same as losing a, a, a family member human, but she'd been with us 15 years and it was very much a peaceful sadness. And because I was able to have a peaceful sadness through it, I was able to support my kids. and. Um, you know, because they were very, very attached to her. Uh, the thing that was hard for us was that she died in a terribly traumatic way. Like she was supposed to, according to the vet, just pass quietly, but instead it was horrendous. You know, um, she did not want to leave this 
world. She was fighting against it. And um, it's just like her whole life. She was just sort of such a battler of a cat. Diverging here. <laughs> but the key thing is even, I've even experienced peaceful anger. And that was, that was an interesting one because you always yeah. expect anger to feel explosive. But I felt this peaceful anger and I went, oh, that's quite interesting. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I was definitely angry. Yeah. I got to experience that for the first time yesterday too, actually. Really? A bit, bit of a moment with my husband and, you know, the separate realities, you know, he's looking at one thing. We're looking at the same thing, but we're seeing completely different realities, you know, from this mm -hmm. thing. And, yeah, it happened. I just went, wow, I'm angry, but it's not that normal just, you know, going to explode sort of, you know, <laughs> need to tear down the walls sort of anger that I had. It was just, oh, wow. You, you, you're there, you're red hot, or you're even white hot sometimes, but wow. But you just went poof, <laughs> left. That was nice. I'll do that again. <laughs> I don't want to be angry again, but, you know, you can just come and go that quickly, you know, just like that. And see, that's where it brings us back to, if we want to come back to Islam and how this fits into the picture, because I think as Muslims that's really important that we always connect the dots that we're always going to have feelings, you know, we're always going to have thoughts and feelings, but we're not accountable for that. We're accountable for what we do. Yes. And so when you have that peaceful anger, there is, it because it passes in that way, then the chances are you're not going to say or do anything that displeases Allah. And what ends up happening is usually the situation unfolds in a much more amicable manner. Yes. Well, I didn't go into my divorce thinking yesterday, so that was alhamdulillah. That yeah, was well, that's probably why you had peaceful anger instead of really yes. anger, because you didn't jump on that train. Yes. You know how they call them trains of thoughts? They say, yeah, well, you just jumped on that train. You know, you can get off at the next station if you want. Yeah. That's <laughs> so it. You have to stay on that train. That's right. Mm, yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah, it was beautiful to experience that actually yesterday. Yeah, I'm glad you've had that experience. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, great topic. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's probably really enjoyed uh, your um, expressive arm movements and way you, <laughs> you're very Aussie. I'm Aussie, a beautiful yes. storyteller, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now you're a story shower, not a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so actually, you know, because everyone's on here and they're lagging behind us a little bit, I can I can tell. But because um, now I'm just waving my arms around on the screen here, <laughs> <laughs> is um, let's ask them to share what they took away from our session, shall we? Let's find out what yeah, they yeah. took away. I'd love to hear have that. To give them a minute. So everybody type. Everyone who's here, there's 10 of you here. I expect 10 takeaways. <laughs> it's putting the pressure on. Share what you took away from our discussion today. What are you going to walk away from today um, from what we've, we've talked about? So go and we'll just chat amongst ourselves while we wait for you to type that up and then I'll share that with Pamela because <laughs> we're here in Zoom together and she can't see what you're typing. Oh, I wanted to share just a little bit about the separate realities thing yesterday. Yeah, go for it. What What... What came very clear for me in the end is that a lot of the time my husband and I are both trying to make it easier for the other person. Ah. Our intention is to actually, you know, not put the other person out mm -hmm. or make it harder for them. But somehow in the middle it just gets lost, you know, and, and, and I'm fighting him because he wants to care about me so much that, that I want to care, you know, he doesn't see that I want to care about him. <laughs> That's so classic. Do you know, that reminds me of this story that I've heard a number of times shared as a part of the um, teaching of Inside Out Paradigm by different teachers, actually, is the story about these, this um, man and woman that have been married like 50-odd years or something, and um, every morning the, um, the wife cuts the bread and she gives the middle of the bread to her husband mm -hmm. and she has the crusts. 
And when it came to her, like her 50th or whatever, there was some point in time she goes, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. I really like the um, centre of the bread. So I'm going to have the centre of the bread today and I'm going to give him the crusts. And when um, she did that, they had their breakfast and he looked at her very lovingly and he says, I love you so much. And she says, why? And he says, because you gave me the fav my favourite part <laughs> of the bread. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's like all those years... <laughs> They could could have both been having their favourite part. <laughs> That's right. And you become yeah, you're loggerheads, and you're like you're getting angry even, and it's just like this doesn't make sense. Oh, I tell you what, the more you understand it, the more you realise how crazy we all are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let's see what's being typed here. So Akaya says what you had to say about jumping off the train of thought really spoke to the heart. Okay, alhamdulillah, good about that, Rakia. Who else is sharing a takeaway? We're, we're waiting for your takeaways, inshallah. And it's good for you to do a takeaway because it helps you consolidate what you heard today. And we've been all over the place, so it helps you kind of pull it all together. <laughs> so just on that train of thought thing. Yeah. You know, it, it does bring me back to a song that, you know, it used to be played in a former life, you know, before Islam and stuff. And it was because we we lay the tracks, you know, I mean, we lay the tracks ourselves, you know, with, the, with the, the, our, you know, the beliefs and stories that we make it about, about ourselves. And the, the lyrics are just because the tracks are laid and just because your ticket's paid, you don't have to board the train. Mm. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, and then well, they they talk about you know you are you know you are who emotions uh, are passing through, but yeah, more more to the more relevant to inside out paradigm is you are thoughts that are passing through, mm. and it's like that is so I've got goosebumps. Like if you could see, my hair was standing on top of my yeah, <laughs> under your hijab. You know, said that, but yeah, of course you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's that's what it is. You don't have to board it. It's it's all laid out there. You can see the track. Got your ticket. Nah, just don't yep. board. It. And the and the other thing is, if you access, if you do board it, and then you go, hang on a minute, I remember this journey. This wasn't the one I was meant to be on. You can get off at the next stop. Absolutely. You don't have to stay on there. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Alhamdulillah. So let me see what else we have here. Daniela says, my takeaway is. This is so real and needs to be shared. The fake positive is so real, yes. So Amy in Melbourne says, take away the positive state is hard, impossible to attain, let alone to keep it up when you have the thousands of thoughts popping throughout the day. Then all those thoughts with, then all those thoughts with running away, dealing with the negative state, Whatever we view as positive and negative, I like also the peaceful emotions, sadness, anger, happiness experience, like the turbulent emotions. Yeah. yeah. So Amy's currently going through the Peaceful Hearts program and is in our inner circle. So she's starting to get it by the sounds of it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Great takeaways. Fantastic session. I really enjoyed our chat today, Pamela. It was fun. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone else enjoyed it. Make sure that you share this with all the people you know who could benefit from it and send it lots of love so that Facebook shares it because that's how the algorithm works. And uh, Jazakallah khair for being here with us today and Jazakallah khair Pamela for such an amazing interview. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, assalamu alaikum everyone. See you next time, inshallah.